Gibbons from papercartridges.com here with Chris Reservoir, and finally the weather is cooperating so we're going to do our long anticipated comparison between the Prussian Dreisse needle rifle and the far superior Austrian Lorenz infantry rifle. Well we shall see um, and this is a little different than a lot of other uh, shooting comparisons. So we're not gonna stand uh, at short range and see which rifle can produce the smallest groups. You will not see a bench rest today no, at no all. Bench. So we're gonna be firing at three separate distances. And I think this is what sets this comparison apart from any others that might've been done is that the ammunition we are using is as close as it's possible to recreate uh, the original cartridges being used. Um, so I've got the original 1855 version of the Dreisse, uh, the self-contained uh, paper cartridge for the needle rifle. And Chris has the correct compression bullet for the Lorenz rifle, uh, made uh, correctly with uh, the proper paper patch and they're, they're even in, in correct paper um, packages. So this is Unlike a lot of, hey, let's go out and see, you know, which gun is better. Uh, we both know that at their time, these were excellent infantry rifles, um, and their capabilities were probably beyond uh, how they were being used, especially in the case of the Lorenz. But this is a comprehensive workup to see just how different are these rifles, and which uh, which you would rather have in a certain situation. So what my theory is that if the Austrians had used fire tactics at that uh, decisive Battle of Königgrätz in uh, 1866, the battle might have turned out a lot differently, and the history of Europe might have turned out a lot differently, and the world, we might all be uh, speaking Austrian right now. So the other, the other key detail today that sets this test apart from a lot of the um, run-of-the-mill run-and-gun tests you'll see is we are not firing on a known distance range. All of our targets we will be shooting today are at estimated ranges, which means we will actually have to use our sights and um, you know our individual range finding ability. This is not, you know, it's at the 200 yard line, set your sights for 200. So this is actually going to be a true workout um, of these infantry rifles. And the ammunition is loaded to the service charges. So in theory, we will be able to use the settings on these rifles as they were meant to be used at battlefield ranges. So our course of fire, it's pretty simple. Um, the first course is at approximately 150 yards, and I don't know if they can see that target, but for some reason Chris insisted on painting them Prussian blue. I, I was going to paint them Habsburg white. I figured I'd give myself every edge <laughs> I could get. So the first target, I, uh, give or take, 150 yards and we'll do uh, we'll, we'll fire at that target twice the first course of fire will be 10 rounds standing rapid so this simulates uh, the armies at Königgratz or any of the the smaller preceding battles uh, in that summer campaign of 1866 when it gets close when the Prussians would have started using uh, what they called Schnellfeuer which is um, utilizing the advantage of the breech loading bolt action Dreisse rifle to put out rapid fire. So that'll be the the first course. Then we're gonna switch it up and go prone. Uh, it's two minutes time to see uh, the effectiveness of these rifles firing from the prone. Now it's kind of a foregone conclusion bolt action breech loader gonna do better than a, a single shot uh, muzzle loader in the prone, but that was another advantage that the Prussians had at Königgratz as the Austrian attack columns approached them. They got down in the prone and were able to deliver um, staggering rates of fire that uh, shredded the Austrian attacks again and again. So after that, we have another target. Well, it'll be the same one. We're just gonna move back to 250. Give or take. 300 ish. ish. Again, we'll have to estimate our distances, and that will be 10 rounds standing. Um, with uh, the clock will be running, but it's not going to be as important because as the distances increased, 
the Prussian officers would control the rate of fire from their soldiers. A big concern with a breech-loading rifle is how fast soldiers can fire off their ammunition. You can only carry so much of it. Um, the, how many do you have in your cartridge box? I've Maybe got, I've got 40 60, rounds. 60, 80? The stuff's heavy. The off. ammunition weighs over an ounce a cartridge, so it adds up. Soldiers can't carry very much. And then the final table of fire will be... I have no idea if they can even see that out there. It's way out that way. That should be closer. 400, 450, 475. If we shoot from our fire pit slightly down the hill from the camera, we've uh, hit it with a range finder at 475. Yeah. So, well, we'll see. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to be on it. We'll see. At 475. I think that's where the Lorenz is going to come yeah. into its own. So, I think there's only one thing left to do is to get shooting. So, let's get shooting. Habsburg cheater are trying to throw me off. Sneaky Habsburg. I have to be honest, I'm surprised this rifle is working still. <sighs> Alright, so that should have been 10. Was that 10? Yes. How many rounds do you have in your box? Two. Two. Okay. I yeah, that was 10. So you screwed me up. You were hitting. Resounding hits. You only missed. I have no idea what you're talking about. It doesn't leave very prominent marks, does it? No, it does not. But there are actually. Look, there they are. Yeah. Adorable little things. One. I thought you said you heard eight? I heard eight. There's one. Nine. Yeah. I'm, I'm shocked at how it... Because that Lorenz is going to put massive dimples in this plate. At this range? At, yeah, it's it's almost going to go through. And these Langlai um, are very, are small, very small dimples. So, yeah, this was... Uh, it was definitely... For, for 1866, this is a low-velocity bullet, uh, with, with an, and this demonstrates the low velocity and the uh, arc that uh, a low velocity gives you at longer range, that trajectory. All right, let's All right. go do uh, two minutes rapid fire from the prone.
Sniff is getting really high. 30 seconds. That is really hot. I don't know how many rounds that was. 14, maybe? It's a little slower than standing. Um, not much. And it's it's not a light rifle, and the bringing it back, opening the bolt and forward, a um, little bit of a workout. But if that was an Austrian column, little charging, two minutes of fire, I don't know how many that was, 12, maybe 13, maybe a few more. Yeah, they would have been uh, a couple hundred Prussians with these rifles at this range is just, you're not getting any closer. And that's what the Austrians encountered again and again at Königgratz, where they formed into their columns and uh, fixed bayonets and Stoss tactic you would have thought it would have died on the in the Svib forest or uh, they would have given you know, up and changed at Königgratz, but it didn't. Um, and you know, sadly, a lot of French soldiers charged into German machine guns over 50 years later, thinking that their morale and their their Elan Vital is going to be a superior force than the enemy's bullets. So. Whew, that was a workout. Let's check the target. This thing is still hot. 160 years old and it performed flawlessly. All right. Now one thing I noticed, yeah, see how low the hit the hits are all I am aiming that See the lower <sighs> elevation. Your windage is everywhere. Windage is is which is that's unusual with a uh, a rifle like this or a black powder rifle, normally your elevation is what is, uh, you get a vertical string. That's a new hit. Yeah, we'll, we'll count them. They're not leaving a whole heck of a lot of marks. Well, there's two right here. One, two, very distinctly. Seven, yeah, because I am aiming at that upper upper left corner is, is where I am holding my aim. And this is after adjusting my sights. But hey, for our purposes, this uh, this illustrates you know the Dreisey bolt action rifle. Schnellfeuer at 150 yards. Now, I, I do apologize to our viewers for how boring this is going to be. Ten rounds out of a 
1854 Lawrence. So we're going to be here all morning. Yeah, we'll be here for a while. Are you ready, Mr. Habsburg? Shooter ready. And commence firing. Now's a good time to go to the bathroom or put something in the microwave. minute 30. So we're shooting these 10 rounds from the Lawrence. In 1866, this would have been 50% of the Austrian infantry soldiers annual allowance for rifle practice. They were given 20 rounds a year in, uh, in target practice. And the emphasis was on training with the bayonet. And you notice how easily those bullets are ramming home. The compression bullet does an outstanding job of fouling control. Three minutes. You can probably notice how much faster the sound of these bullets hitting reaches us compared to the dry seat. And that's a excellent audio <laughs> comparison of uh, muzzle velocity. Three forty-five. Well, ten nine, rounds fired, nine hits. Nine hits, and the first that was just your fouling shot. So, if. Uh, I think he would have clocked him if it was already uh, already fired. Well, yep. You don't have to film it, but I do want to go check my look at the target. Yeah, let's go check. Yeah, and it's you, you've Fast. got a group going too. What was your point of aim? Probably at the ground. Bottom in front of the of plate. It. Yeah. Oh no, yeah. They're not. Uh, they're not putting as bad of. Uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. There's a nine. nine. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, there's no no mistaking where those hit. <laughs> I wonder what uh, 
Well, some of these are already, they're snake. hitting dimples already. This one's fresh. I love the sled smears. Blah! Yep. And uh, at the long range target, we will find spent bullets in front. Uh, at this range, they're hitting and just, they're uh, liquefying. liquefying. In there. Yep. All right, it's time to get to the really, really, really unpleasant part of this shoot. This is my favorite part. Commence firing. seconds. One minute. That just looks painfully unpleasant. One minute thirty. Forty. Forty five. One minute forty nine. So we're calling it at three rounds in two minutes. Two minutes. I noticed with uh, the uh, powder cylinders you were tossing away, lots it, of powder. it sounded like there was a lot of powder left in them. That's why your rounds were going yeah. short. Well, I comp after the first one, I compensated. I hit two of the three, but it is almost impossible to get the, the powder cylinder empty at that so angle. So on a scale of one to bloody awful, how bad was that? Uh, I would say that's a lot like Riding in a porta potty that's attached to a bungee jump. That sucked. So we have moved back to an unknown distance. I don't know if you can see that out there, that blue square. Next Prussian blue square. Next time we're doing Habsburg white, or I guess it would be. Uh, gray since they were their uh, great coats in summer um, over over a shirt but and then while we're here I don't know if you can see the uh, I don't know what that is 475 450 probably we'll closer to five from here um, but this is our next uh, table of fire Nothing for it but to do it. Ten rounds, deliberate fire, commence firing.
Maine men like to fight standing. It's a good thing I don't need a thicker tree. I'd be kind of screwed out here. Yeah, said we Croatian men, Hungarian men, <laughs> Austrian men, Slovenian men, Polish men, Italian men, tea rollers. If you look to my right, you'll see the Svib bush. Yeah. round. Commence firing. And a ricochet, but it's a hit. I had to find the range. Yep, that's Because we don't know how far away this target is. She's stretching her legs now. I don't know where that I don't one know. went. right in front of it, like dirt splashing on the plate right in front of it. That was right and low. Went through the Joshua tree right behind the target. Saw a bunch of fucking a bunch of wood shoot out the back. Wow, not good. I'm surprised you hit it at all. At this range, I should be clocking it. Well, we don't know what this range is. Super low. Yep. I don't know. Center. Two out of ten. What's the time? Two fifty-eight. Well, actually, this started eight seconds late, so it was about okay. three oh seven. 
Wow. Some of it is... It's yep, well that's... The lesson from this is trajectory. The flatter the trajectory is the more forgiving mm -hmm. round because you don't have to... Your elevation doesn't matter as much. Mm -hmm. The the dangerous space, you can say that that's two something? 250-ish? Two 250-ish. Two the dangerous space of the Lorenz at 500 meters is the dangerous space of the dry sea at three. So your rifle theoretically is gonna be effective at the 500 yards as this is at three. Which is why uh, I argue the theory by 1866 and definitely by 1870, this was an obsolete rifle. Yeah, if the enemy gets within 150 yards of you, they're gonna clean your clock. Um, but anything beyond that, it's a bit of a stretch. Rolling and commence firing. All right, watch my fall shot for me. I have no idea. Might be going over because I don't see any splash below him. Well, my sights aren't adjusted, and I'm aiming center of mass. I don't know. I don't see anything. Should have brought some binoculars. It is a long way. You can't see if it's over or under? No, I don't see any splash. These are huge bullets. You should be seeing something. I'm not seeing anything, but I can't through the yeah, smoke. No, I also don't have my glasses. The Lorenz is holding up very well. Oh. After what, close to 40? Something like that. Right now, it's not hitting anything, and I can't see where the bullets are going. No idea. I can't I see know. splash. I think it's because the ground's so wet and their velocity by the time they get there is low enough. They're just injecting themselves in the ground. That was a hit, it finally. Yeah, it might have skipped in, but I heard clang. inches to the right of the target. Yeah, I flinched that one. I felt it. That one sounded like it had a lot of paper in it.
rounds complete. Five ten. target is maybe five from here but it's uphill so the bullets don't have as far to fall as they would if it was level with us so by the time I was hitting mine was set at the four five mark and I was aiming center of mass I have no idea how much good that's gonna do you but there's there's my dope Oh, that is just <laughs> clean some of this. The Germans have a wonderful word for the residue left. Pepier Schleim. And it does <laughs> smell particularly yeah. horrible oh when gosh, clean. This is bad. The glue uh. and the black powder and the wax make a god awful stench. All well, right. Sveptish. Commence firing. No idea. <laughs> Did not see splash. Yeah, Hans, the bullets come out of that end. I'm looking to see how much following is left in the grooves. A lot. So this is the uh, 600 Schritt target or sight. I heard it hit dirt, but I didn't see where the hell it went. They're so slow by the time they get up there. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. But the sound of the shot to the sound of impact on dirt it's is forever. a long time. Yeah. I have no idea. I can't see him at all. But I'm guessing low. I think if it was up in the rocks, we'd hear a different dull thump. Go a little higher then. That was that was in the rocks. You could hear it. about to get droned. Oh no. Oh, that was about 35 feet low. I saw that one. Low? 35 feet low and right. Did you hear the whistle on it though? That How was far way, right? way low and right. How far right? Like 10, 12 feet at this distance. <laughs> 10 
10 feet left, 10 feet short. But at this distance, they're practically falling vertically out of the sky. That might, that last round might have been a hit, but it sounded so very faint. I don't... I, I'm, I'm not sure. But that, the second to last round you fired was no joke. See where the ravine comes down the hill? It was 30 feet down the ravine to the right of the target. So with the Dreiser, you can see all of the fouling around this cone at the breach. That is from leaking gas. And depending on how hard you close your bolt handle when you're loading the rifle, determines how much gas is going to leak out. Uh, Prussian soldiers would slap the bolt handle down firmly to try to seal that breach as, uh, as hard as possible to prevent as much gas as escaping. But the problem is even if your ammunition is consistent and your your aim is on the this is a variable, especially after it gets dirty. I mean, look at that. That is absolutely grungy. A lot of escaping gas. Now it's not as bad as the myths and rumors are that it's blasting back in soldiers' faces. They had to fire it from the hip. You know, all of that is uh, is a hopefully by now well debunked myth. But it does leak gas at the breach that affects the velocity of the bullet, which affects the trajectory of it. So as we saw here at long range, it's uh, one round came close, the next is 10, 15 feet low, and uh, back and forth. Um, which uh, you know should demonstrate the shortcomings of this, this weapon system by uh, the mid-1860s and 1870s. So this is Chris's first shot with the Dreisi Zundnadengewehr. Filthy lady she is. And I'm interested to hear his thoughts as a, as a muzzle-loading man. Oh, you need to aim high at this range. <laughs> This is this is very schmutzig. Ah, ah, kurz. That'll do. This is the future. Okay, now you clean it. Commence. Start it over. My finger's stuck. <laughs> 